Hi, welcome to another edition of Business Bites. My name is David Tai, the Managing Director of Bauer Media Audio here in Northern Ireland. And this week, my guest is Barry Nielsen. He's the CEO of the CITBNI organization. Barry, welcome to Business Bites. Uh, thanks, David. Thanks for asking me. Well, it's great to have you. Let, let's get into the, the conversation. Tell us about the CITBNI. What, what does it stand for and what are the aims and objectives? Yeah. We are the Construction Industry Training Board in Northern Ireland and our role is really to help employers in Northern Ireland recruit people into the industry and train them to the jobs that are needed within the industry, both for now and in the future. Well, it sounds like a, a, a great organisation and certainly one that uh, is going to be helping people out. So we're at the time of year where people are potentially thinking about careers. Um, now, for the uninitiated, when you think of building, you think, CITB, you probably think go straight to building sites and then you think of uh, brickies, plasterers, electricians, plumbers, things like that. But but there's a hell of a lot more, isn't there, to the uh, to the construction industry than just that. Tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, yeah. there's a huge about more from the, the people that work on the ground. And yes, we do need joiners and brickies and plumbers and electricians. And it's interesting when you think that at this moment in time, plumbers probably earn more money than lawyers within our economy. Um, so these are, these are really valuable and, and, and good jobs for people to go with. But there's a whole gamut of other jobs. We have the professional side, the, the civil engineers, the architects, the surveyors, um, and, and then there's all the technicians and the other jobs. People think of construction of what they see on site, but there's a huge amount of work in the background with planners. Um, there's a huge IT infrastructure within the construction industry and now we're into building information modelling which means that we're building our, our, our structures in a computer before we even get to site. So there's a lot of IT people in there. And just the other day I was talking to a, a construction company and they're actually looking and hiring people to operate drones on the site. So that's now becoming a job within construction so that we can record um, all of the progress on site and monitor all the work on site from a drone and it can go to height so it's people working more safely. So there's a huge amount of jobs. And interestingly, um, it doesn't matter where you start within construction. Uh, you can start if, kind of leaving school. If people are coming out of their school, seeing their GCSEs and, and their, their A-levels or all out hires in Scotland, um, they might be a wee bit disappointed in where they're going. University isn't always the best route for an individual. Coming into the construction industry doesn't matter where you start. It's an industry that will take you and develop you to the extent of your abilities and talents. And yeah. at a young age, sometimes you don't even know what your talents are. So it'll allow you a bit of time and space to explore that as well. But we take in lots of graduates and we take in lots of apprentices and we take in lots of people from all sorts of different routes. So it's, it's a very open door within the sector. Well, it sounds fascinating. And obviously, at the minute, we hear a lot of talk about vacancies right across the board in many industries. Um, so where's the construction industry in that, uh, in that horizon? Yeah, we're the same as every other sector at the moment. Uh, what we're finding is that we have an age gap within our, our sector. We've got a lot of people in here that have, are of an age that over the next five or ten years, they're going to be leaving the industry. And we need to recruit at least 5,000 workers over the next few years just in Northern Ireland, a lot more across GB. Um, and we are, look, we are in competition with all sorts of different sectors for that talent. But the important thing is, is that within construction, what we are looking for is people who can think for themselves, people who can problem solve, people who are active and, and looking to do things. And we attract and uh, prosper with people who learn through doing stuff, the practical learning, project based learning. Um, and if that is where your talent lies, it doesn't matter if you're an A star student or not. There's a place and an entry route for you to come into the industry. And we're desperate to recruit talent into the industry, true talent, people who can problem solve, people who can think and people who can develop. So if you're looking at your results, if you get great results, we want you. If you've not got, if your results aren't so great, we still want you because we can then take you in and develop you within our industry. Um, what is the... So what's the kind of pathway then? So if I'm, uh, let's say I'm a student and I've just got my exams, can I just call you up and 
and, and see what you can do for me? Or does it have to go via an employer? How, how do we interact? Yeah, there's, there's, there's various routes. A lot of people will go straight to an employer and then the employer will send them to a college or uh, another provider to go through their, their technical qualifications, whether it be through joinery or whatever. Or you can go straight to an FE college and enroll in one of the many courses that are there. And there's a huge amount of courses within the construction environment there. Or there's a university route and then you're coming out of university and our construction companies are, are sucking up graduates like nobody's business at the moment. Um, and, and in fact, one of the things that we do is that we're encouraging people to go to university. CITBNI offer bursaries of a thousand pounds to 12 individuals to, just to take up a, a degree qualification within the, with the, any of the construction disciplines. So we are supporting people moving into that to encourage them to do that. And we're all scrabbling, all the different sectors are scrabbling for the best of talent. So we're trying to make, make the best of that. But I think of, if you, if, you, if you think in your mind, sort of like think of a scaffold, think of a construction career like a scaffold, you can enter it at different points and then you can move up at different points and you can stop on a level and then wait and then move along and take a different career path. I started off as an apprentice draftsman on a large board with pens and tracing paper. IT took, ho took over that. We now do all of our drawings in, in a computer. So it's more, it's more an IT job than it was a, a, a drawing job. But I decided to move on and I did ONC and HNC and then went on to the degree and became a chartered civil engineer. There are very few other industries that I'll, would allow me to come in at that really base level and then progress. And we're one of the highest sectors where people join at craft level through an apprenticeship and end up running their own business. And I'm not talking about small businesses. There are plenty of managing directors of huge construction companies that started off as brickies and joiners. So we're not, a, we're, not, we're not an industry that limits people. We're an industry that allows people to prosper. So anyone that's out there who's looking at their exam results or thinking of a career and thinking, I don't necessarily want to be a brickie or a joiner. Well, that's fine. There are a thousand different jobs within construction that you could come into our industry and work with. Well, Barry, uh, certainly you're a passionate advocate for the industry. We can tell that by, by talking to you. So when we look to the future, finally, um, what does the future look like for the construction industry? S someone used to say, when you see a crane in the sky, you know the economy is doing quite well. So yeah. w w where is that crane right now? Is it half built, fully built or just about starting off? I think the crane's about half built at the moment, um, and we're now looking towards new and different cranes, um, if, if right. I can put it that way. Um, the future is, is incredible. If you think that everything that everyone in our society sees and touches and allows them to live, that's all created by the construction sector. So when you see a new building and you think, wow, that's, that's a step up, it's glass and steel rather than bricks and mortar, that's the evolution of the construction sector and we're moving even further. And there's always a different challenge. Uh, we are, we're looking at energy efficiency within there. And if you want to change the world, the only way to change the world is to change the environment that we, that we live in. And that's the construction sector. So we are moving forward with that at a pace and we're needing new talent. We're needing new ways of thinking. And we need people coming in to the industry that will push some of us older people within the industry and challenge us and make us think differently about the world that we, we, we live in and how we create that world. So the future for construction is always good. What I would say is that um, it comes and goes, it ebbs and flows at times, but there's always somewhere in the world where the construction is booming. So if your idea is to, they used to say, join the army and see the world. Well, I would say, join the construction sectors and see the world because it really can take you everywhere. Well, Barry, we've got the contact details coming up at the end. Uh, we have reached the end of the conversation. I would encourage anyone to search for CITBNI uh, online. All the contact details come up at the end. But thank you for giving us an insight today into your organisation. And thanks for being our guest. Thank you for the opportunity.